Hi, I'm, I'm Brian's little sister, Laura. Um, on behalf of our family, we want to thank you for the outpouring of love and support that has come our way during this difficult time. We're grateful to have this opportunity to honor Brian and share with all of you glimpses into the ordinary life of our fallen family member. <laughs> it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that my brother is gone. It's harder still to think about how he left this world alone on a stormy night. What is harder yet is that I can't imagine that Brian won't be with us to create more family memories for the rest of our lives. For those of you who know my brother, you know he was bold, honest, direct, sometimes ornery, always a little short on sleep, funny, outrageous in so many ways, and most importantly, and quietly, super thoughtful and kind. Brian lived to work so he could provide for others that he loved and cared for. To know Brian is to know his generosity, generosity of his time, of his resources, of his being, and perhaps most famously, for his generosity of all things Costco related. To know Brian is to know the carloads full of bulk items that he just couldn't resist picking up and delivering on a whim to family and friends. Seriously, he must have kept that place in business. To know Brian was to be called by a potentially offensive nickname, which I'm convinced were his veiled attempts to show affection from his wife, who he referred to as OCE, <laughs> to his son, the monkey, to his stepchildren, Pumpkin Puss and Clam, <laughs> to his parents, the old maid and the old timer, <laughs> to his siblings, school crap, the asshole, Chauncey, Chuck, and young Lori. Brian had a nickname for pretty much anyone who knew and considered, and he considered family or friend. For those of you who knew him personally, please just take a couple of seconds. And think about a nickname that Brian had for you. Maybe even share it with the person sitting next to you. If you had a nickname, you knew you were in. And when I say in, I mean in his heart. He'd do anything for you. To know Brian, was to receive outlandish, ridiculous coded text messages that were often a series of emojis, purposely misspelled words, <laughs> intertwined with numbers and symbols. And sometimes it would take me several minutes to figure out, what the, figure out their meaning, and sometimes not at all. I laugh now at the number of times I exclaimed in an exas exasperated text response, what? Brian's outrageous personality was quirky and crass. How many of us? have received a text message with the greeting, sup, shitbird, or were those messages only sent to me? <laughs> Secretly, I hope he kept those obnoxious greetings just for me, but I bet he used it, or similar with so many of you too. He somehow had a way of making others feel special, even with insults. Now that's a gift. <laughs> Brian was real. He never sugarcoated anything, and if you were on the receiving end of his tongue lashing, you always knew where you stood. Yet, he also had a tremendous heart and always paid attention, especially to the finer details. I've never met another person who stocked their fridge full of different kinds of drinks that amounted to any of his guests' favorite beverage of choice, from Yoohoo to hard cider to beer to muscle milk to soda pop, as he liked to call it. Who else do you know who has two fridges stocked with drinks all lined up in perfectly neat rows, labels all facing the same way? Oh, how I love to disrupt his sense of order by turning one of those cans or bottles so that the labels were slightly askew. It drove him nuts. Don't worry, he always had his revenge, like somehow making it into every bathroom in a person's house to turn the toilet paper roll so that it pulled from under rather than over any time he visited. That drove me nuts, but always made me smile. Somehow, Brian let you know he was there. He always found a way to leave his mark. To know Brian is to know sacrifice. Brian gave up countless hours of sleep to serve not only his community, but also his family and his friends. As I mentioned earlier, he worked so that others could live their lives to their fullest and to, allow their, uh, and to follow their dreams. His deepest passion and commitment was to his son, little Brian. <sighs> Who he invested in and believed in with all his might. He would do anything to make sure that little Brian could chase after 
and achieve his dream of, dream of becoming a professional soccer player. <laughs> Brian's investment in others didn't stop there. If, you knew, if he knew you were focused on something, like take, for instance, Susan's culinary aspirations, <laughs> he made sure that it happened because anything is possible with Brian in your corner. <laughs> Brian had odd ways of expressing love and support, yet he always showed up and followed through. To know Brian is to know his zany fashion sense, which I dare say was on point in the 80s as he acid washed and dyed his guest jeans in buckets in our home, while his 80s look was totally on trend with his mustache, his perfectly styled sun-enlightened hair. I can't say the same for his fashion sense in recent years as he sported oversized Costco jeans, old sweatshirts, and worn out sneakers. I mean, seriously. I don't know another person around who rocked camouflage <laughs> and multiple ear piercings for so many consecutive years. I'll miss giving him a hard time about his lack of fashion sense. And I'm so grateful we have so many photos of his fashion do's and don'ts over the years to keep for our memories. You saw a bunch of them up there too. Brian was fierce and convicted. You never had to wonder where you stood with him because he always let you know what was he was thinking and feeling. Brian lived a Costco bulk size filled life with all the things he loved, family, friends, good food and drink, cars and travel. If you think he lived life big, he loved and cared for others even bigger. He loved without saying I love you, rather showing others how he felt about them through thoughtful, personalized gifts, surprise deliveries, and special outings. My wish is that my brother is remembered for how he lived, for these unique Brianisms, not for how he left this world. Like many of you, I'm not ready to say goodbye to Brian. It just doesn't seem right. So instead, I'll say audaciously, in the words and spirit of my brother, all right, God bless. Later, shitbird. <laughs>